Hey there guys, it's Jason Lucchese. On today's video, I want to discuss with you uh, a non-circumvent, non-disclosure agreement. I've been receiving a lot of questions, either be on our live Q&A coaching calls, in the Facebook group, wherever it may be. People are always asking, you know, what if, you know, you've got your seller and your buyer and you want your your buyer to go take a look at the property and they perhaps talk to the seller and try and circumvent and try and get the deal out from underneath you. You know, this question obviously raises uh, a bunch of different questions and obviously there's an integrity standpoint on, on the seller and the buyer's side that we obviously, we don't see coming if it does perhaps happen. And I'm not going to tell you everything is is going to lead up to you having a perfect deal, you know, because there are people out there that, that do uh, shady things. And, you know, obviously they're not people we want to do business with. It's just some people, you know, if they're making nine, 10, maybe $15,000, they'll look at making that, that quick buck and really not worrying about the relationship that they just burned. Because a lot of people don't realize that real estate is actually such a small business. Okay. Yeah. There's lots of deals, tens of thousands of houses out there to, to be flipped, but our real estate investor community is so small and all you have to do is just say one bad thing about somebody. And next thing you know, every other individual in your market understands that, Hey, if I get this deal and I send it over to, you know, Steve, he may circumvent me and he may try and take my deal. So nobody's going to want to work with that person. So the reason why I'm bringing this up is I, I like to personally use uh, just purchase agreements. I don't like to use assignment of contracts. And I'll, I'll talk about assignment contracts on another video on, on why I like to do this over not doing uh, an assignment. So what I do with my seller, okay, because I do a lot of virtual wholesaling. So I'll have a separate purchase and sales agreement with my seller, the owner of record. And then what I do with my second transaction is I have a separate purchase and sales agreement with them. I don't use a fancy uh, purchase agreement, by the way, either. I, I just simply like to use my state approved purchase and sales agreement. Uh, keeps the transparency uh, completely wide open. Uh, the documents have already been approved and uh, already gone through the, the legal uh, procedures from state approved attorneys. So everything on that standpoint is, is fine. Um, obviously, depending on what language you want to put in your addendums is obviously, I would make sure that you have an attorney review any contracts that you need help with. But I just personally like to use my own state approved purchase and sale agreements. Now, Yes, you know, the, the case may come up to where I am out of out of the state and I have a buyer. The buyer is is under contract. I've got a fully executed contract and I also have a fully executed contract with the owner of record, the seller. And I am set to to make a ten thousand dollar profit, uh, net profit. Now, if my buyer wants to go and see the property to maybe do an inspection or maybe just to do a walkthrough of the property and that all has to be arranged through the seller, well, th there could be a problem to where if your buyer, if you've never done business with this buyer before, the buyer could go and say something. Yes, they could. Now, before you, know, you have your buyer go out there, it would be wise to have them sign a non-circumvent, non-disclosure agreement. That would be a good thing to do. But from what I've been told from my attorney is that most of the time the, the NCNDs really won't hold up too much in court, which is kind of a sad thing. Uh, it's, it's a document that's signed by you and the buyer. It, it should be something that's held up in court, but it's, it's your word against their word depending on exactly what they want to do. Now, the thing I want to discuss with you is if you've got a really strong deal and you're going to set, you know, you're set to make, you know, 10, 15, 20,000 dollars plus on a deal, it would be best to protect yourself. Now, what I personally like to do in cases to where, you know, I I have not done business with this buyer. 
And, and this is only stuff that I do when I haven't worked with a, this previous cash buyer, okay? What I'll do with the, the seller, when we're signing all of our agreements, you can use your own state approved um, option contract. Now, in the option contract, uh, you can clearly state, and again, you may want to have your attorney uh, put specific language in there that, that you would want, but I typically like to have in my option contracts that I do have uh, the capabilities of marketing the property for sale, uh, renting it, leasing it, um, whatever it may be. I want to be able to have those options because that's what I'm ultimately doing by doing an A to B and a B to C transaction. So what the option contract does is it places a lien on the property. Okay, uh, so it it acts. I don't want to say it acts like a judgment, but you know there is going to be an attachment on that deed now or deed of trust wherever you are. And what's going to happen is if that buyer does circumvent you and the seller and the buyer end up doing something uh, together to where they're going to want to have that deal done now with me being circumvented out. Now, when they go and try and close, they're not going to be able to unless they pay me off. And that's where the option comes into play. Because when that option is signed by both me and the seller and that contract is recorded, I have the first option to purchase that property, okay? I have all the option right now to do whatever I want with that property. So if they want my option taken off of title, because right now I'm clouding it, clouding the title. If they want me off, they're gonna have to pay my option. So they send over uh, whatever information, okay, that, you know, hey, we, we're gonna offer you this, and I say no. Um, it, it just all depends on how much you're looking for. So if you, say for instance, you and the, you had a deal with the seller, your buyer was going to pay and you were going to make 10 grand, we'll make them pay the 10 grand because you already had that deal in place. So they shouldn't, uh, feel like, you know, they're not getting a, a less of a deal. They, they tried doing, you know, a, a thing that really violates, uh, the integrity of the relationship and of that contract uh, to where, hey, I'm going to make you pay. You know, you owe me 10 grand or else there's not going to be a deal. Okay. So that option contract is such a great uh, option for you that it gets recorded. Um, it does cloud the title. So if they do try and circumvent you, that option is on there. Now you can put a certain period of time that the option is good for. That may be something to where your seller is like, no, I, I, I only want it good for 30 or 60 days. You know, I've gotten them, I've gotten away with having them good for a year. So it's just all about how you phrase it, how you word it. So it just really depends on how quickly you want to get the deal moved. Okay, if you've got a cash buyer, you're not sure on this particular buyer, you haven't done business with them before, I would try and make it 90 days um, because, you know, what they'll try and do is, you know, maneuver around the contract and try and get that voided if they do and try and, and do this to you. But most of the time, you're not going to have this problem. I, I just wanted to address it right now uh, because, you know, some individuals have been uh, coming and asking this question before. And I wanted to share it with you because this wasn't something that I had at my disposal uh, when I was getting involved in, in real estate. And it did happen a couple of times. So I just want to make sure that you know the option is there. Now you can get that option contract recorded. Uh, just what I would recommend that you do, check with your uh, state approved contracts that you can receive. Every state does have an option. It may be called something different. Uh, but if you need to come up with your own option contract, that's something you can do. Seek legal counsel uh, to make sure that everything that you're putting in there is valid and correct and obviously legal. So other than that, that's what I wanted to bring to you today. I wanted to discuss the option contract and, you know, how really a, a non-circumvent, non-disclosure agreement really may or may not, depending on your state, may not have any traction whatsoever. So I want to make sure you're prepared. I want to make sure that you're getting deals closed and you're making money and not having people that are, are doing this business the wrong way and they're trying to go behind your back. That's not the right way to do business. So 
if you feel like you need to get the option contract recorded, do it. Um, it will be your protection. It acts as, as an insurance blanket for yourself, and it gets you paid. So that's uh, my, my video for today that I wanted to create. Get out there uh, for you and make sure that you're fully protecting yourself uh, when doing business. Um, if you need legal advice, obviously I'm not an attorney. This was just you know some information that I was going over with you uh, from previous experience. But always consult, especially on contracts with uh, legal counsel. And um, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know. Give me some feedback below. If you like this video, click the like button. And I appreciate your time, and I will talk to you soon. Take care now.